Troy Bayless starts off pole position in the Team Kawasaki ZXR with Peter Goddard alongside him. Row two will be Martin Craig on the Team Kawasaki and Dean Thomas in the mobile Honda. Row three, Ben Archibald and Sean Giles on the Ducatis. Row four, Damon Buckmaster and David Emerson. And out of row five, Rip Crocker and Paul Young. Well, it's supposed to be Rip Crocker starting out of that position, but there's his bike, bike 21. He's dropped it on the warm-up lap, done some damage. The marshals have pushed it away, and he's a non-starter today. Moments away, away they go. In fact, jumping off the line, wheel standing, getting the power to the ground. Opening shell, superbike heat at Sandown. Two Kawasaki's in control, one running wide there. Big field shuffling through turn one. And down toward the S's for the first time. I think it's Peter Goddard and Mark Craggle fighting for position as they head up the back straight for the first time. We welcome Kevin Schwantz to the commentary. 32 it is, Bayless the pole man with Peter Goddard right behind him. Kevin, you've done some time on uh, Superbikes. They're just fabulous machines. They really are. And uh, Bayless and, and Goddard both got off the line really well there. Troy looked like he had may have even jumped the start a little bit, but I don't think he was a full bike link over. And that's right where Peter needs to be if he's going to race with uh, Troy today. So onto this tight infield section, which they use as a safety measure for the superbikes. Bayless, it is in control from Peter Goddard on the Suzuki. Plenty of power, about 150 horsepower. Kicking through the rear wheel of these things, pretty wild to ride. And I guess, Kevin, uh, a great training ground for future Grand Prix riders. It is, and uh, you know, over the past four or five years, there's been a lot of good talent come through the Australian Superbike Series. Um, Troy Corser, Anthony Gobert, um, a lot of those guys are uh, working their way through World Superbikes now and on to hopefully uh, Grand Prix racing in the very near future. So the Sean Giles there, first the Ducati 916 hard under brakes there, the bike's squirming around, five, Craggle in behind him. They come onto the pitch straight for the first and nine. That's one's down. Looks like Peter Goddard. Big shame. Hansard Air Freight Suzuki has dropped in the grass. Qualified second fastest, looking very good on Saturday. But now he's got it all ahead of him. Bike doesn't look too badly damaged. Looks like uh, Peter just got a little bit too far out, out outside there. And uh, I think the bike just went down to the low side. It doesn't look like it's done much damage, so it didn't go down very hard. But it's going to be tough to uh, to motivate himself and get back to the front, especially with this race only being nine laps long. He's our race leader, Troy Bayless. Ducati in second, Sean Giles, Martin Craggle in third. So a good strong run from the Kawasaki's. Taking on the Ducati at Sandown here. ZXR 750R, still the most powerful bike in the field, but not the most successful. Hang on, we've got a problem here for five. Martin Craggle leaning up in the saddle. He had some problem down there in the front of him. What could that have been, Kevin? Uh, I didn't really see what happened there. I was uh, was kind of looking over the, the start sheet to see where <laughs> who the number 65 was. Uh, looks like Craggle must have a problem with the bike, the ignition, or or, uh, or something. It's not smoking, so I don't think it's it's well, it's terribly bad, but uh, it's definitely keeping him from running. Well, he's been taken by a few. He's got a problem. Looking over his back, looking down at the tank. He's not sure what it is, but it's slowed him up enough to let a whole swag of bikes push their way through. And there is our race leader, 32 Bayless. Doing it easy out in the front. Let's just look how close second place is. It was uh, three, about three and a half seconds last time across the start finish line. Waiting for second come around. Should be Sean Giles on the Ducati. There he is, like 19. The Ducati, a very dominant machine in World Superbike competition. Five time World Superbike champion, 1991. 92, 94, and 95. The last two years with Carl Fogarty at the controls. And uh, by adjusting the weights this year, Kevin, to make both the V-twins and the four-cylinders 162 kilograms, I guess they're trying to stop this dominance of world superbikes by the Italians. They're, um, yeah, they're really trying to e even things up and uh, keep the racing as close as they can. The Ducatis have definitely had some advantages over the past couple of seasons. And, um, it's good to see superbike racing um, keeping a good tight control on that and, and keeping the racing as equal as they can. Bike 74 off the racetrack and out of the race apparently. Rob Phillips making his comeback, the 39-year-old. And uh, a disappointing way to debut, Kevin. Yeah, he won't. He won't be real happy about that. And there's another bike coming coming from off the track back on, which is uh, I think less than less than ideal racing line. Phil Allen, it was on the Ducati in trouble as well. No troubles for this man, 32. Troy Bayless, fabulous debut. Team Kawasaki Australia. 
showing the sort of dominance that Matt Maladden showed a few years ago. If he can continue this all year, he'll absolutely wipe the floor. One lap to go. Final lap. Eight laps completed. So one more lap of the 3.9 kilometre Sandown Raceway in Melbourne. And I guess having seen the staircase to success for previous Australian champions in Superbike, Kevin, if he keeps this up, he'll probably be heading in the right direction. Yeah, I would have to say so. Um, I, uh, you know, the Australian kids who've been coming out uh, as of recent in the world superbike racing, uh, you know, really come in and made a name for themselves. I think Troy Bayless is, uh, you know, is set to do that as well. If he can continue to ride like this and dominate all season long, um, he stands a really good chance of moving up into the world ranks. Now you started in superbikes in the States, moved into European Grand Prix racing. Which do you see as the best way for a young rider to start through the European system of 125, 250 up to 500 or through the superbike path? Well, I think a lot of it depends on kind of what you've grown up racing. Some guys have never ridden anything but Grand Prix type bikes, um, which is a little bit more rare than, than guys who, who ride superbikes a lot. So um, the superbike racing is good. The 125 and the 250 class is good. I still feel like superbike racing is a better stepping stone to get you into 500cc racing because the bikes have more horsepower than the 250gp bikes and the 125gp bikes and it just uh, it's a little bit easier to compensate uh, from going to a superbike to going to a 500 than it is a, a 250 to a 500. And I guess the physical size of them and maybe the weight of them gives you a better physical preparation too. We used to do a, a, an endurance race in Japan and uh, about halfway through each season and after that you go get back on the Grand Prix bikes. You just flick the things around <laughs> underneath you. They felt so light and so much fun to ride. Okay, here's our race winner by a country mile, Troy Bayless. Over four seconds the gap on Giles as they come across to take the checkered flag. Bayless the winner. Shell Superbike Series Heat 1, fist in the air. And well he may do that, Troy Bayless. Let's check it out on the Shell race score. That's the man who won, Sean Giles in second position, Ben Archibald. On the Gibson Freight Ducati in third position, Dean Thomas in the Mobile Honda and David Emerson in the Kawasaki ZXR.